Thank you so much for joining me for the Daily Profit Factor as well. I am your host, Dr. Angela Chester. This is what we do on this show. I know you already know, but I need to remind you, you're going to be enlightened, inspired, and empowered today to be your best self. Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today, we're going to get you fired up about everyday living but living still committed to your faith. Now, one thing that we get on Sundays is the word. However, our pastors choose to deliver it to us, and our praise teams and choirs do a great job. But what about the rest? of the week. And that's where this book is going to come in handy. We are talking about Christian information about our Christian faith. My guest today is Ree Ashbaka, and we are talking about his book, The Christian Faith, A Quick Guide to Understanding Its Inner Workings. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Reed. He was born here in the United States and holds both a BA degree in Comprehensive Bible from Cedarville University in Cedarville, Ohio, as well as an MA degree in Christian Theology from Trinity Theological Seminary in Newburgh, uh, Indiana and has completed some postgraduate work towards his Ph.D. in Religious Studies, endorsed by Canterbury Christ Church University, England. Reed has been a believer in Jesus Christ for over 55 years. While experiencing life through secular fields of military service, business ownership, and radio broadcast engineering, Reed has served in local churches as a deacon, a teacher, and as pulpit supply. Throughout his life, Reed has sought to promote the Word of God as the source of true reality. This reality is reflected in Jesus Christ as he states, Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Matthew seven twenty eight. So I want you to go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your tea, get your coffee, get settled in your chair, because I can't wait to share today. Good morning, Reed. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Well, thank you, Dr. Angela. I appreciate you having me on. I really, really love it when we can help people um, get the scripture, you know, off the page and into their hearts so that they can walk it and live it every day. I know that's something that I try to do with those who utilize my services, and I'm so glad that you're doing that as well. So I have to ask you, when did you decide that this was going to be the book you wanted to write? Well, that's a good question. You know, I was working on my uh, Ph.D. that I really never finished, uh, spent a lot of time, uh, writing, I enjoy writing, and uh, so this book came along in my mind, and uh, it's really a combination of uh, what I learned over my lifetime and my education, and thought it was something needed for the Christian community because of the nature of uh, worldwide church uh, mm-hmm. denominations spread all around the world, and I think this would be a perfect uh, a book for that. And the idea came to me right around 2009. And I mm-hmm. finally got around to getting it written. I, it published, uh, I published the first edition in 2015, and I republished it again as a second edition under my own brand in 2017. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like that, under your own brand. Good job. Now, how would you describe your writing style? Well, you know, I, <clears throat> I like to teach. Uh, I like to write. I ask a lot of questions in my books to get people to think, and uh, then I answer those questions that I feel uh, is a biblical answer, biblical perspective. And uh, so I basically write to give people information uh, that they may or may not have that might be helpful to them, and that's, that's really what my writing style is. Mm-hmm. I like that. You want to give people the information that they may not have. Now, when I hear you say that, that to me says, I'm not going to just give you the top three scriptures that we always hear. What are some other ones that we need to know that are just as important as the ones that make the top ten list? Is that correct? 
Yes, I, we're gonna, we talk about uh, concepts and principles uh, instead mm -hmm. of rules and regulations. And, uh, and so we're going to talk about uh, the scripture uh, that people should know and that supports what they believe but don't realize mm -hmm. it's even there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you have named this book something that I think will pique someone's interest, The Christian Faith, A Quick Guide to Understanding Its Interworkings. Um, what would you say, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but for someone who's like, hmm, that is kind of interesting, what would you tell them are some main points about your book, or overall, what is your book about? Well, uh, basically, uh, we talk about the, the nature of Christianity, mm -hmm. its origins, its fundamental principles, its fundamental teachings uh, that should be taught. It doesn't really matter. It's a non-denominational book from that perspective. It's mm -hmm. a Protestant perspective versus a Catholic perspective. But all faiths should be able to read this book and pretty much uh, agree with what's in it. Um, there might be something in there. I try not to put my personal opinion in there. I just try to share information that I think is right. basic foundational information. But I may have thrown a bias, something in there that somebody didn't agree with. I don't ask my readers to agree with everything I say. I just ask okay. them to read it and consider what is, what is being presented to them. And I okay. try to leave room for the Holy Spirit to work. I'm not the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Holy Spirit is truly our teacher. And so I try to give information so the Holy Spirit has something to work with. If we have no information, if we have no knowledge, then how does the Holy Spirit work on our, our hearts and minds with, with no okay. knowledge? And okay. I think you'll find that the scriptures teach it that way. That is a very, very great point. Now, many times when we write, we have a certain um, reader in mind. Would you say that this is for someone who is uh, a beginner in the, in the Christian faith, or is this book just as important for someone who is a seasoned or more mature Christian? Well, you know, when I was writing this book, I would, you have to ask those questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Who you're writing, who you're writing to, and uh, what's the genre, and who do you think you're trying to reach? Um, so I think in my mind what I put together and how I put the book together is, is if you're an unbeliever, uh, this would be a great tool to give this to an unbeliever. It, mm -hmm. will, it has the gospel, it explains it, uh, and it would be a good tool for evangelism. If you're a new believer and know uh, very little about the new faith that you found, this is a perfect book for you. It will give you all the fundamental things that you need to know and uh, to get started, and then the Holy Spirit will take you from there and take you to wherever you're going to take you. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you've been a believer for a while and you're in a church that uh, perhaps doesn't get heavy into teaching, they just, uh, they're more of a praise and worship, and you go and do that, not a lot of teaching, biblical teaching, then this would be a great book if you want to get into the Word because the book tells you every tells you the structure of the scripture and helps you understand how the scripture where it came from how it was mm -hmm. developed and uh, all the aspects there's a chapter in there about that so uh, i think it would be helpful to just about anybody that w wants to pick it up and read it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now for some people and this is this kind of popped in my head for some people they say well um i know that at my church we read the King James Version. Um, someone else may say, I know that's traditional, but I'm more of a NIV type of gal. Does it right. matter when they're reading your book, does it matter what version or what translation of the Bible one reads? Will you be able to use it across all of the, the new Bibles that are available now? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the truth is truth. And... Uh, whatever translation you're using, actually chapter 4 deals with the canon and its translations. For and we sure. talk about how the, how the Bible was translated, where can, what translations are, and then I make some recommendations of what I think are good translations. Right. And then I encourage people, if they feel very comfortable with translations, to go ahead and experiment and use other translations. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I cover that. I, don't, uh, I understand there's King James-only people. I understand that there's people <laughs> that are tied to other kinds of translations. Personally, I, I use the New American Standard of 1960, mm -hmm. uh, but I grew up on the King James. I memorized the King James. 
So mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any biases. I just I just look at the scriptures, and from my background, I know what I want to have in my hand, and I chose the translation mm -hmm. that I use, and I'm happy with it. And if you're happy with what you're using, and it's a legitimate translation, and we talk about that in Chapter 4, then have at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you. It's, a, it's a something that... I think nowadays everyone has their personal preference, like you said. Um, I, too, was taught the King James Version. Um, that's not necessarily the version that I use in, in all aspects of my life, but that is, that is true. Everyone is kind of committed to the one that speaks to their heart, and I'm glad that you addressed that uh, in your book to give people the freedom of, of choice and knowledge there. Now, I know that we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but I want to ask one more time, um, what types of topics do you talk about? I know the theme is a quick guide to understanding, but what topics do I need to make sure that I understand within the Christian faith for those who may have joined us a little bit later? Well, uh, actually, that answer, the answer to that question is in the table of contents. Uh, mm -hmm. Chapter 1 is the historical beginning. So we talk about the historical beginning of the Christian faith, the foundation, where it came from. And, uh, and if you read through that chapter, uh, you, you get into all of that. Um, and then chapter 2 is the gospel from beginning to end. And so it talks about uh, what is the gospel and, and who is Christ. And mm -hmm. then it gets into... Uh, different aspects of that. Um, talks about faith and repentance. Uh, it asks questions about uh, why the message and uh, mm -hmm. different things like that. Uh, what is required? And then it goes into uh, what validates the message, and we talk about that. And so you're getting into apologetics. So if you're interested in apologetics, I think Chapter 2 is an excellent chapter for you. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 3 is the historical teaching to the Christian faith. So uh, we talk about what the scriptures teach as a whole about God, the Holy Spirit, about Jesus Christ, about the church, and about a number of things, uh, doctrine, about the doctrine of man, the doctrine of sin. Um, and it's just foundational truths that uh, every denomination should hold to. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically... Uh, it tries to stay away from the controversial things about the spirit and baptism and so forth and so forth, although there's discussion mm -hmm. around baptism. Mm -hmm. uh, the canon is translation, which we talked about, and it talks about how the scriptures uh, were translated and why we have translations. <clears throat> and then we get into uh, chapter 5 is the interworkings of the church. So we talk about church polity. Uh, mm -hmm. Different churches govern themselves, so we give you all the various different types of church government there are and uh, why they exist, and uh, what they are, and, and how they work. And so then we talk about the office of deacon and pastor, and we talk about the ordinances of baptism and uh, uh, communion, um, the Lord's table. And so we talk about those aspects, and uh, I would think that none of those things should be controversial. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for some, a new believer, you know, walks into a church and, they want to know what the structure of the church is. I don't understand church polity. I don't understand the structure, the governing of the church. So this chapter covers that kind of material. And then the last chapter uh, we can talk about later. Okay. Well, that is definitely a need to have resource because I think that you have truly touched on those things that, um, especially someone who's a new believer or it's your first year or two uh, within the faith that you will have those questions. Um, truth be told, there may even be someone who's a little bit more of a seasoned Christian who, who may need a little refresher course every now and again just to make sure that we are um, understanding what's going on in, in the various denominations of our churches and why we do what we do. That, that is an, an excellent read. Well, it is now time for us to go to break, but we don't want to make sure that everyone is able to uh, follow you online and pick up a copy of your book. What is the best way to do that? Uh, you can go to my uh, author's book website. It's uh, booksite, B-O-K-S-I-T-E dot R-C-E-T-C dot com. That's uh, booksite dot R-C-E-T-C dot com. 
And uh, you can even buy my book there at discounts, and you can look at all the other things that I've written and uh, catch up on what's going on with uh, the author who read Ashbacher. All righty. All right, sisters, you know where you can go to pick up a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. Being with Infants by Montessori teacher trainer and world-renowned child specialist Beverly Kovach is finally on DVD and digital download. The long-awaited 3D disc set is essential for any new parent, grandparent, or infant caregiver wanting respectful relationships with infants and their care. Being with Infants is broken down into 20 easy-to-digest video lessons complete with demonstrations. Everything from diapering, feeding, the proper way of picking up infants, sleep, crying, environment, play, weaning, and much more are covered. Being with Infants is available on DVD and digital download at Walmart, Target, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon. Order today and be sure to follow Being with Infants on Facebook for free bonus content. Smell Good Spa for the women who are making a conscientious change in their personal care products. Specializing in signature fragrance oils, hand-dipped incense, and wholesome bath and body and personal care products. Smell Good Spa. Use code HELLO25 for 25% off your order. Live good, feel good, smell good wholesomely. SmellGoodSpa.com And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Healing Spot with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. We want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you this morning. And how are we doing that? With information. My guest today is Reed Ashbacher, and he has written the book, The Christian Faith, A Quick Guide to Understanding Its Inner Workings. Now, if you want to know about the ups and downs, the things that you may have had a question about and you didn't know who to turn to, this book is sure to answer those questions. And I love that Reed has taken the time to map it all out for us. Now, I noticed that, Reed, that the last chapter is um, kind of an, an essay format. Why did you choose to do that? Well, you know, I was uh, when I was in seminary, I I had to write a research paper uh, for a uh, New New Testament theology course, and this chapter really is the result of that. And mm-hmm. uh, it uh, kind of funny. I, I I I decided to use it because it did fit the book. It's kind of a summation of the five chapters that were written uh, in principal format. Uh, but uh, the professor wrote a very interesting note to me on that when I wrote that paper. He said to me, you know, every pastor should have this information. This is mm-hmm. a good paper. And I thought, really? I said, why is that? <laughs> and, and I thought, you know, well, if he really felt that way, uh, maybe this would be something I could share at some point down the road. And mm-hmm. so when I wrote this book, I decided that it actually did. The Lord made it fit perfectly into it fits the content and the context of the book. And so I fit it into Chapter 6, and uh, anybody can read that at any level uh, of their Christian life, and I think they'll, mm-hmm. they'll enjoy that. Uh, the, the chapter really is uh, founded on Warren Wiersbe's outline of the Book of Romans, and I got written permission to use his outline, so I published his outline in that chapter so that you can follow along. And then I filled out that outline with my own uh, thoughts and, and writings. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and so that's how that chapter got developed. And uh, it's really uh, an explanation of the Book of Romans and uh, how uh, the church, both the Gentile, in the Gentile world and the Jewish community in, in the early church days, and how they should have gotten together and, and became a single church, but it never happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this is an explanation to the historical background uh, of the church uh, from Paul's eyes. And, uh, and then if you follow through the uh, uh, outline there that Warren Wearsby put together, uh, which was a very brilliant outline, I thought, and uh, it was just very easy to fill it out and, and uh, say what I needed to say, and I think uh, I think people, for the most part, would appreciate what's there. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, so many times within the, um, the writing process, um, I know that I like to ask some questions that um, assist those who are aspiring authors out there, or they're just kind of curious about the, the, the behind-the-scenes types of things. So when you were writing your book, did you decide that, okay, it needs to be edited, and I'm just going to share the book with someone that I know that can do it, and they will be loving and kind, and they won't hurt my feelings, but they'll edit the book, you know, and do a great job? Or did you seek professional services? And if you did, how did you decide on who was going to edit the book for you? You know, that's, <clears throat> that was another thing the Lord put together. Editing is, a, is probably the most expensive portion of writing books. <laughs> uh, it's, if you hire a professional editor, it's very expensive. And when I wrote this book, I didn't have the money. Mm-hmm. So I, at the time, <clears throat> I belonged to faithwriters.com, uh, and uh, they have, a, at the time, about 68,000 uh, writers from, from the amateur to the professional. And so I uh, wrote the management there and asked them, do you have anybody <clears throat> that would be interested in editing my book? Uh, I can't pay them. I would give them credit in the book, but I, I can't afford to pay them. And mm-hmm. so they, uh, they sent an email off to a gentleman in Australia. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I don't know if I know how to even pronounce his last name. Uh, it was uh, Noel uh, Mitaxa, I believe, M I T A X A. Uh, he lives in Australia, and um, if you read his bio, he's a, a Baptist minister, and and he's also a newspaper columnist in, uh, for a national mm-hmm. paper there, from my understanding. And he's also a chaplain in different uh, aspects and so forth, and. So he took the project on and was more than happy to do it for nothing. And, uh, and it was very interesting because he, he had a word processor that was designed for Australian spellings, and I had a word processor for U.S. spellings. So in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning we, our spellings were not <laughs> – they were different. The same thing is true if you do it with U.K. You know, if you, do U, if you find a guy in U.K., he's going to spell the, the English word differently. And right. so after we got that, after we got that fixed, uh, <laughs> it went it went fine. And uh, you know, he uh, it was very interesting. Uh, he I, I'm very detailed. I'm, I tend to be wordy, and mm-hmm. he took out about <clears throat> he took out about five thousand words. Uh, mm-hmm. And and so when you're talking about forty forty two thousand words, five thousand words mm-hmm. may not seem much, but eh, right. it's a few pages. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, but when it was all said and done, I read through it, and I said, you know, that sounds like me. It's just better. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and that sounds, you know, that's how I would say When I read it, I could, I, you know, it sounded like me. It but still sounded it was, like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it still sounded like me, and it was, it was better, and it's what I wanted to say, and it's what I did say. Mm-hmm. So right. uh, that, was, that was the process. And, uh, and it was and with a 15-hour uh, timeline, I think it's about 15 hours between Australia and the U.S. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we couldn't always communicate right on the moment. We had to wait, you know, a whole day right. uh, to mm-hmm. respond to emails and to communicate. And so it was an mm-hmm. interesting process, and I enjoyed it, and he did a great job. Right, and wow, what a, what a moment to uh, practice patience. And, and, and all of that and just kind of, you know, going, oh, my goodness, an immediate answer was like 10 hours as opposed to it being 24. So, yeah, I can, I can imagine. That's funny. Little, little stuff like that. That is, that is so true. Now, you now have written the book. You have it edited. You are ready to go. Now it's time to publish. When it came to publishing, how did you make the decision? Did you want to self-publish? Did you want to have it published? If so, how did you determine what um, process you were going to go through? Well, you know, the first edition was published by Westville Press. Um, mm-hmm. But as I've been, I've, been publi- I've been writing for about eight, nine years now, and the process has been going on and on and on, and so I've been learning the, the publication process and how it all works. And so I bought some programs that would help me do some editing of, of not only the book but also create uh, covers and, and that kind of thing, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, Adobe InDesign and that kind of thing. And uh, and so 
now I publish all my own books, um, mm-hmm. and uh, it doesn't cost me that much. And uh, I just actually I just started a publishing uh, company actually. Um, so now I can publish myself, and if other people are interested, they can they can look up my website mm-hmm. and publish with me as well. But uh, the brand name is under my name because it's been out there for nine, ten years. I wasn't going to waste uh, the recognition on the web. Right. So I, <laughs> you know, because it takes it takes years to build brand. Right. And right. I've been building I've been building an author's brand name. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether anybody has seen it or not is irrelevant. If you type in my name, you'll find thousands of spots where I, I, I exist by name. Right. So, I called the com- so I called the company Reed Ashbacher Publications, uh, but in my books you'll see mm-hmm. it says Reed Ashbacher Publication. Uh, mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I just put an S on it and said, well, I'll turn it into a company. And uh, mm-hmm. as, an author, I am, as an author, you are a company if you're self-published or if you're in that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You're, you're self-employed. And uh, so it wasn't a leap to move from author to uh, publishing. So... Uh, that's that's it in a nutshell, and uh, mm-hmm. it's been a lot of fun. Well, it is now time for us to go to break. But Reed, I want to make sure that everyone is able to uh, follow you online and pick up a copy of your book. What is the best way to do that? Uh, you can go to my uh, author's book website. It's uh, booksite b o k s i t e dot r c e t c dot com. That's uh, booksite. Dot rcetc.com, and uh, you can even buy my book there at discounts, and you can look at all the other things that I've written. All righty. All right, pictures, you know where you can go to pick up a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. Being with Infants by Montessori teacher trainer and world-renowned child specialist Beverly Kovach is finally on DVD and digital download. The long-awaited 3D disc set is essential for any new parent, grandparent, or infant caregiver wanting respectful relationships with infants in their care. Being with Infants is broken down into 20 easy-to-digest video lessons complete with demonstrations. Everything from diapering, feeding, the proper way of picking up infants, sleep, Crying, environment, play, weaning, and much more are covered. Being with Infants is available on DVD and digital download at Walmart, Target, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon. Order today and be sure to follow Being with Infants on Facebook for free bonus content. Discovery, not just a second. What would it look like if we listened more? Could the right voice, the right set of words, bring us all just a little closer, get us to open up, even push us further? It could, if we took the time to listen. The most inspiring minds, the most compelling stories. Download Audible and listen for a change. Hi everyone, Dr. Angela here. Did you know that Daily Spark is now on Facebook? That's right, you can visit with me at facebook.com forward slash Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I want to know more about what you're thinking. I'd love to know which interview did you find the most entertaining or the most informative. I want to talk to you and I want you to be able to talk to me. Simply visit facebook.com forward slash Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, have you found that the um, the the print on demand um, way is is easier for you? I know that many times when we are using uh, publishing houses, when you place that order for your book, and I know this is kind of turned off some people from time to time, is that that one order really is like a hundred books, and then they're stored in your garage or they're in that spare bedroom. <laughs> Where, where, you know, you're really just wanting one copy of it to give to your mother, but now you have a whole hundred books because you had to place that order. Have you found that um, the print on demand is, is a little bit easier? If you want four, you order four. 
Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. print on demand is a uh, is a new. No, I shouldn't say new. It's been out for a while, but uh, fairly new for the industry. And the concept is simple. Uh, they keep your book electronically stored. Whoever you mm-hmm. choose to be the publisher, printer, uh, distributor. Uh, in my case, I use Ingram, uh, one of the world's largest okay. uh, book, one of the world's largest book distributors. Um, but uh, they, uh, if somebody places an order, say with Barnes and Noble or Amazon or with Books a Million or with whomever is out there that's in the network of Ingram, which is just about everybody. Uh, when that order goes in, it in, immediately within uh, 24 hours gets printed and shipped to the order to fill the order. That's mm-hmm. print on demand. So when somebody demands a book, no matter what that quantity is, the order goes in, it gets printed and shipped. Mm-hmm. And now the industry sees it as as long as that book is printed and shipped within 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, it's seen as same as books on the shelf. It's in stock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's really convenient for people who don't want to have to order a thousand books and sit them in their mm-hmm. living and dining room and then mm-hmm. try to peddle those books and then have to get a, get a tax code license from their state so they can because they, they've got to collect tax on it. Mm-hmm. And they, now they've got a real business going. And uh, mm-hmm. I didn't want to get into all that. I didn't want to have to get a tax thing. I just want people to go provide. And uh, now Ingram provides through Ariel uh, – they provide a bookstore for me, and I put it on my website, and you just use their platform, and you can order all my books, and I can just count them whatever I want, and it, mm-hmm. it all works very well. I, it's mm-hmm. just perfect. So uh, the print-on-demand is perfect for authors who are starting and don't have a lot of money and don't want to stock books. It's mm-hmm. not the cheapest. Uh, you know, there, are other, mm-hmm. there are other methods of printing, and uh, mm-hmm. if, if you just want to have a book, if you're a pastor or someone and you just want to have a book to hand out or to sell when you go to conferences and so forth, then you can do that a little differently and do book runs where you might print, uh, you know, 100, 500, 1,000 books like we talked about mm-hmm. uh, because you're going to pass them out. You're going to sell them as you travel because you're on some kind of a conference speaking system. Right. And mm-hmm. So you're going to be getting rid of those books, and it's cheaper to print books that way. And mm-hmm. uh, so uh, that would be a different method. Uh, print on demand isn't for everybody, but it works for me, and uh, mm-hmm. it's it's a, just a very good system. Mm-hmm. It really is, and and you've made some really really great points because that is true. When we do conferences and all of that, it's different. You do want those hundreds of books because you will be selling them or handing them out, or that might even be something that you've negotiated with with that particular um, event planner that your book is included within the price. So that is a that is a great point. Well, I cannot believe that our time is up already, but I have really enjoyed talking with you this morning about not only your book, but but ways that we as authors can grow and learn and be able to expand ourselves. But Reed, I want to um, give you an opportunity one last time, please. Can you remind everyone where can they get a copy of your book? You can purchase my books at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Kobo, Apple iTunes, ChristianBook.com, uh, my own personal book site, uh, which is booksite.rcetc.com, booksite, B-O-O-K-S-I-T-E dot R-C-E-T-C dot com. And I have my own little bookstore there, and you can purchase through the Ariel Ingram uh, book system there. Uh, it's safe and secure, and, and uh-huh. there's all kinds of other places, 39,000 other places worldwide. You can buy it in Australia, anywhere in the world, Germany, U.K., Mm-hmm. And my book site uh, carries over 100 links uh, that will take you to a bookstore in your country or in your state or in your area. Okay. Uh, there's, a full mm-hmm. li- there's a full list there on my website. That is so awesome. Well, Reed, thank you so much for being uh, with me this morning. We have enjoyed the time that you've spent with Daily Splash with Dr. Ambla. Thank you. And listeners, thank you as well for tuning in and spending your morning with me. And as always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy. Until next time, everyone, be blessed in the Lord. Bye-bye.